How is 2054 doing? Did sales pick up after this weekend's fireworks and attack on Israel? Ah, absolutely. Uh, as you know, the book deals with geopolitics and artificial intelligence, and I suspect there was uh, a nascent artificial intelligence behind the Iranian drone swarm that charged at Israel. So yeah, the book's doing great. Thank you very much. Now, Admiral, I read your Bloomberg column. I'd like you to try and communicate to the audience the complexity of the defense net that was thrown up by CENTCOM and in which Israel, of course, is the prime participant in the United States, number two, and Great Britain was there, and Saudi was there, and the UAE was there, and Jordan. Just sort of describe how many people were involved in this defensive effort on Saturday night. This is a huge area to defend, um, as in uh, Israel. And, uh, of course, I spent my career, as you know, as a captain and commodore and admiral in charge of guided missile destroyers that uh, have this as their primary mission. The hard part is knitting together all the command and control that goes into this. You just ticked off five or six nations. I'd add the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to that. Uh, France was also involved. You're right. It begins with satellites above uh, providing information in real time. That goes into multiple command centers where one of them speaking Arabic, another one speaking French, another one speaking English, obviously, uh, another one speaking Hebrew. All of that has to be knitted together in uh, visual context to create a single unified picture. And then the hard part starts, which is allocating targets. When you've got 170 drones coming in, uh, who's going to shoot the three that are right over Damascus right now? Who's going to pick up the targets coming from the south? Uh, will that be an American warship? Will that be an Israeli at point defense? So incredibly difficult, a real feat of modern arms to put this together. And uh, my hat is off to the air defenders, broadly speaking, who knocked down 99% of these incoming projectiles. It's been widely reported in Israel that Benny Gantz and his colleague in the war cabinet, the observer, uh, the general who lost a son and a nephew in Gaza, urged an attack on Iran during the attack. But the IDF and Prime Minister Netanyahu took the IDF's report, said, no, that will put too much stress on the system. And I get, you know, that made, that made sense to me. What's it mean to you? Uh, same. Uh, I know General Gantz extremely well. I count him as a personal friend. We worked together constantly over four years when he was the chief of the Israeli defenses. I was in charge of U.S.-Israel military relationships when I was the supreme commander of NATO. Uh, so I know him very well, and, and he's a warrior. He's a, a paratrooper, a fearless fighter. Every bone in his body would say strike and strike now. However, um, I would say uh, in this case, uh, revenge will be a dish best eaten cold, as Machiavelli said. I think uh, cooler heads probably prevailed appropriately. Now's the time to decide what comes next in terms of retaliation. Now, the War Cabinet has been meeting again today for the third consecutive day. And there are all sorts of leaks, and I don't believe any of them because there's an information war going on. But what's on the menu of possible things, in your opinion, Admiral Stab? Um, uh, let's think of it in four buckets. One is go big, throw the entire Israeli Defense Forces might against Iran, take out the nuclear program to the degree you can, very hard target, uh, go after industrial sites, go after military capability, a kind of Israeli version of shock and awe, bucket one. Bucket two, um, do something against the Iranian homeland itself, probably go against the, for example, factories where the drones are being produced, places where ballistic missile parts are stored, where they're assembled. That's bucket two. Bucket three, um, a little lighter touch. Perhaps you use cyber to go after the Iranian economy. You could go after maritime targets. The Iranian Revolutionary Guard just seized an Israeli-owned commercial ship. You could go after the, the targets that... Uh, provided that capability to Iran, notably their warships and intelligence ships at sea. You could use special forces ashore. 
That's kind of bucket three. Bucket four, which I highly don't recommend, is do nothing. So where does this land, Hugh? I think probably not the all-out strike, simply because Israel is so engaged in Gaza and beating back Hezbollah to the north. Uh, certainly, you don't do nothing. I think you probably strike something on the Iranian mainland. They attack your mainland. I think you feel you have to strike their mainland. And then I think the bulk of your effort could well be cyber and at sea, that coupled with a strike ashore. That would probably be my prescription. No, Admiral, I, I know that the F-35s have stealth capability, and Israel has F-35s. I don't know if they can get them to and back from Iran and from whether it's the IRGC headquarters or the nuclear sites or the oil refining, do they do they have that distance capability? Um, they would require tanker support. Uh, Israel has some tanking ability, nothing like the United States. Um, if, if Israel wanted to go big, they would almost have to include uh, U.S. support. I think that's probably not likely. Uh, as a result, I think they'll be pushed to the options that I described. Now, Admiral, they have land-based cruise attack missiles. I don't believe Israel has ballistic missiles, but you can correct me if I am wrong about that. Does Iran have the same net that can defend Iran as well as Israel defended itself? Because I agree with you, you cannot change the equation, allow the ch equation to be changed. I, I just don't see how Israel can do that. But I'm not sure. You, you also don't want to have anything not get through and be embarrassed, right? Right. I would say, uh, again, war is unpredictable. And oh, by the way, Iran has been steadily increasing their air defense capability with the help of Russia. So they have a reasonably strong capability. But what do they lack? They lack the alliances. They lack the unblinking eye of uh, our, our intelligence and satellite systems. They lack the dispersal of uh, defensive weapon systems. They're kind of concentrated around their principal targets. So uh, if Israel chose to attack, it would be a combination of uh, cruise missiles, perhaps some from the sea, some from land. It would be the air assault we've been discussing. Uh, all of that uh, could inflict some real hits on Iran. And let's, let's close with this. You mentioned the F-35, focus on that number. Uh, here is what Iran flies around in, F-4s. That's before ah. F-15s, ah. before F-15s, before F-18s, before F-22s. You know, we're up to F-35s now. Iran is still flying F-4s left over from the Shah few other crummy Russian jets, uh, their air forces would be toast, not to use a technical military term, in the face of Israel's air forces.